I design theatre shows and uh, my interests um, in the last few years have been looking at more tactile technology, especially for very young children. My particular area is, is to look at the way children interact with objects and whether we can add some digital technologies to those objects. When you say interactive, so we're not talking about just clapping and booing and hissing when the pantomime baddie comes on, right? No, because you're looking at very, very young children and they like to touch everything. So you're making things within the, uh, the world of, of, of theatre um, where you might interact with something like, through your voice. So you might shout or talk or, or clap, or, again, like in pantomime, but this way, not only the actors are interacting with you, but the objects are interacting with you. So, should we do some claps to try and make the tree wake up? So, for example, in the show I recently did, The Runaway Here, we had a tree. And in the interaction of the tree, you talk through funnels and the tree will begin to light up. Now, that, that tree lights up according to your voice. If you whisper, you'll get lower interaction. If you speak louder, you'll get the lights moving much faster. The microphones are attached to a microcontroller, which is a small flora made by Adafruit. And we program it using Arduino programming. A 50 strip of LED lights are then attached to the microcontroller. This is then enclosed in a tree, which we made with tape. So we are interested in both the aesthetics and the use of technology. So we do not want to compromise the aesthetics within theatre, but also include some level of interaction. Do you think that we need this sort of tech for children? We find that more and more children at this age group are using apps. So therefore they are growing up with this sort of level of interaction on, on the screen. Some parents are wary about it, others aren't. Uh, and, and so you find that, um, that they're already touching toys and playing toys and looking for that sort of interaction. Um, uh, having that in theatre, I think it's a natural, for me, it's a sort of natural um, progression to making that interactive. It allows, I, I find it allows the parent and the child to maybe interact and play, but it adds a, an additional layer. We took them along a pathway to a meadow. Now, the idea of this entire show was that they were looking for hair. So each item, um, in some way, they were going to interact to, uh, and maybe give them clues of where this hair might be. This is like the rabbit style hair, right? It not, is. Not, not hair on your head. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, the rabbit okay. style hair. <laughs> so he's hidden somewhere in the piece, and so they're, they're after looking for him. And so they enter onto this meadow, which has been recreated with pressure sensors at the bottom of them. The pressure sensors react to very, very light touch. So a three-year-old's weight, uh, an 18-month-old weight, will allow the pressure sensor to trigger sound. So we, the rabbit was hidden in a giant flower. On the bottom of the flower, we had um, stroke sensors. Now, stroke sensors are made with a kind of conductive uh, tread mixed with any other tread. But here we used a kind of furry fabric and we mixed in the conductive tread with the furry fabric. At the back of the fabric, you need to have two strips of conductive material and then you stitch in the conductive treads in it. That then again is attached through either conductive treads or wires to a board, another microprocessor board. Because what happened is that the children tickled the flower and the flower laughed. And uh, this is where they discovered the hair. So it was the hair it was doing a sort of comical laugh at the bottom. So we had five of those and there were five children. And so they can all sort of tickle the senses. You can give it a tickle if you want. Tickle the puppy bit. We were interested in kind of soft senses. And this, the soft sensors you kind of handmade to give that tactile interaction. So part of this is that children at that age love tactile interaction. And so we were really interested in, in how we can use different ways and different sensors for, for that sort of um, interaction. So these stroke sensors, is this something you've kind of come up with? Is this custom? If you go onto the, onto the web, um, you, will, you will find different types of stroke sensors, uh, small stroke sensors. Um, here I've integrated it with a normal fabric that already has um, fur onto it. Um, so it's something I've adapted from um, stroke sensors that are much smaller. So we were looking at um, increasing the size of things. Uh, for theatre. Technically, we were looking at uh, 
um, at Bluetooth devices that we can uh, look at um, in terms of if you had a lot of audience that were running around in a space and you wanted to then identify that particular audience. Uh, we wanted them to come together as a group. Um, you might then use uh, sort of Bluetooth uh, wearables uh, and so on. They're not at all cost effective and having about five or ten Bluetooth devices in one place, it's rather difficult. So part of the research was looking at a wider area. I suppose with more and more experiments, we'd be able to develop better and better interaction. There's lots more theatre theatres that are looking at immersive theatre. It's been growing. It's been around since the 70s, but it's been growing recently. Lots of people want to do more. And a, a lot of theatre companies find that a lot more people find it's more interesting to come to a theatre where they can move around the space rather than just sit on a seat. And so I think more and more theatres, due to that, um, if, if people are interacting with different things, maybe that uh, more and more theatre companies would be interested in, uh, in this technology as it allows, um, it allows almost the technology to become like the actor. In, in, in some way, the technology is acting at that point because it's triggering the sound or triggering the light or triggering vibrations. And I'm going to have to ask the question because computer file viewers will be wondering about your accent. <laughs> so please go and tell us where, where is your accent from? It's a Trinidadian accent. Um, I, I was born in the UK but uh, grew up in Trinidad. Been here for a while. <laughs>